Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be having a look at the 2017 Paper 1 Theory for Computer Science. I've made some other post paper videos. I've had a look at 2021, 2020 and many other years. You can go check that down in the description. I'll have a link to all those videos. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the 2017 paper and we are targeting the major paper. Okay, and this is um, the variant 1 as you guys can see here. So further ado, let's just begin, okay? And the first question looks like it is on the conversions of data, okay? So here we are given, you can identify this, this is a binary digit, so this is a binary value. And it's saying we have to convert this binary value into hexadecimal. Well, let's read the question, it's always important to read the question, you never know what it's asking. So it says, the memory of a computer contains data and instructions in binary, so it's even told us that it's in binary. And it's saying that the following instruction is stored in a location of the memory. So it's simple and it's telling us to convert this into hexadecimal. Now, to convert binary to hexadecimal, I told you to write one, two, four, eight on top of the values and you ignore the ones where there's zero. So then you just add it. So four plus, uh, eight plus four is 12. So I haven't, you know, got the answer, but I'm just writing 12. Then here is one, two, four, eight. This should be uh, three plus four plus seven, seven plus eight, so 15. And here one, two, four, eight, that should be nine. I'm ignoring the re zeros, remember? One, two, four, eight, and I'm only adding two. So my answer will be two, nine. Remember 15, okay? In hexadecimal, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14 and then F is 15 okay so you can say that 15 is F so 2 9 F and then 12 is C so that's the answer 2 9 F C the next question says explain why a programmer might prefer to read the instruction hexadecimal rather than binary now you can see that this code right here is much easier to understand compared to all these digits so here's the first one the first one I can write uh, here it is easier slash quicker to understand. Okay. The next one is that if there was a mistake in any of these values, hexadecimal will be much more easier to find the error. So easier to find, find error in hexadecimal. Okay. Or you can say easier to find error slash identify error. Okay, you just need two marks, so that means two points. Give two other uses of hexadecimal. You can say number one, memory dumps, memory dumps, and you can also say, um, for example, the MAC address, MAC address. Okay, we go. That's easy. Two marks. The next one says that programmers use high level language. So we have high level language and we have low level language. So what is high level language? Now high level language is for example, Python. Okay. If you know Python, some people learn Python in their school uh, because of preparations of paper two. Um, so basically high level languages, high level languages are, are basically are more closer to the human language okay that would give you one point okay and the other point and the other mark would give you um, an example okay uh, a language um, such as python okay and there you go that will give you your two marks your one mark will be here and your second mark will be there so that will be two marks okay the next question is a program written in a high level language is translated so it's written in high level language it's translated to machine code okay this is so that it can be processed by a computer because remember machine code is simply um the language of a computer type name one type of translator that can be used you could say um a compiler you can also say an interpreter uh remember an interpreter does line by line a compiler does the entire thing okay so you can see this question is related to this, okay? So for example, uh, you know, if I, I, you should look ahead and see, you know, if, if you know what interpreter better than compiler, you should pick interpreter, but I'll, I'll do both of them, okay? I'll do both of them, so interpreter. So I'll do both of them. So let's start with compiler. 
okay? With the compiler, as I told you previously, this one will basically translate the whole program. So number one, it'll translate, translate entire program at once, okay? Then the next one, you can say that it will create, creates an exe file. And the last one for the third mark, you can say um, a report is created in the end. Okay, so that is compiler. Let's do the interpreter now. So interpreter. Okay, so uh, have I spelled that wrong? I think so. Yeah, spelled that a little bit wrong. Interpreter. Okay, so the interpreter you can say translates code line by line. Okay, the next one is that the um you can say the program is executed program code is executed um ex executed and the last one you can say is that will identify error as soon as found but remember for the um, compiler, after everything is done, that's when it finds the the error, for example. Okay, the next question it says that Steffi has number of files, okay? And it's telling us that that contain her work, okay? And this is a question on, um, it looks like it's a question on the different sizes of data. This is all chapter one, by the way, okay? So yeah, let's have a look at this. So it says, Steffi has a number of files of different sizes that contain her work. Tick to show either if it's true or false. And um, the first one is KB. KB and MB. Okay. Now, you need to know the, the whatever, the structures or um, the different types of sizes for each and all of them. Okay. Because remember, in the syllabus, TB is the largest. Okay, is the largest, followed by GB, okay, then MB, and then KB, okay. That's how we we are moving up, okay. So you need to understand this in order to get that question. Okay, okay. So now let's finally answer the uh, question. So first of all, he's saying forty-seven KB, okay and 10 MB, okay? Is 47 KB larger than 10 MB, okay? Is it larger, that's that's a false, okay? Because remember, KB, if I want to convert this, uh, okay, remember, KB is, KB is way less than MB, okay? So that's all you need to know. The value itself can tell us if it's true or false. The next one is that it's saying that 250 bytes, okay? Yeah, so after KB, after this bytes right there. Okay, so byte is smaller than 0 0.5 MB. So 250 bytes, and then there's 0 0.5 MB. So that's true, it is small. Because remember, it's kilobytes, then bytes, and then MB. MB is bigger than the bytes. So therefore, the bytes is smaller. Is 50 GB larger than 100 MB? That's true. Because remember here, you can see GB larger than MB. Okay, and the last one, one TB is smaller than four GB, that's false. Okay, some of this is general knowledge, and you'll know that because remember TB is right here, so TB is the largest one, and GB is um, after that. Okay, so that's the answer, we move on. The next question says, five statements about serial half duplex data transmissions are shown in the table below. You have to tick to show whether each statement is true or false. Okay, so we're having a look at serial half duplex. So serial, Okay, the word serial tells us that it's in one direction. Okay, uh, sorry, it's in uh, one one wire. Okay, one wire at single time. And the half duplex shows us that it's both directions, but not at the same time. So let's see, data is transmitted in one direction and one bit at a time. No, it's false. It is one bit at a time, so that's correct, but it's not one direction only because it's half duplex. Half duplex is both directions. Uh, sorry, um, it's both directions. 
The next one is saying that data is transmitted in both directions, which is correct, but multiple bits at a time. So that's again false. Okay, so one part of the, the statement is correct, but not the other. So that means it's still false. Data is transmitted one direction only. Okay, one direction only. That's correct. Oh, sorry, that's wrong also. Sorry, it's in both directions. So even this is false. Data is transmitted in both directions. That's correct because it's half duplex, but not but only one direction at a time. That's correct because if it's at the same time, then it's full duplex. And data is transmitted one bit at a time. So that's correct. Uh, that's a true. Now, data is transmitted in both directions, but only one direction at a time. So that's wrong. Okay, that's wrong. Uh, because, oh, sorry, uh, wait. The second statement is wrong. Sorry, sorry. The second statement is wrong. So this is correct. The second statement is wrong. So that's false. Because it's not multiple bits. It's single bit at a time. Single bit at a time. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, the next question says party checks. This is the easiest question in your paper and you cannot get this wrong because even a primary kid can do this question, okay? Because look, it's as easy as just counting the number of ones, okay? And if it's odd, then you click on odd or whatever it's using, okay? So here it's saying we're using odd party. That means the number of ones should be odd. It's as simple as that, okay? It's as simple as that. Yeah, very easy so you just count the number of one so here it's four so what does that mean that there's been corruption that that there's been corruption that's been taken place because it has to be odd here it's five so then it's not corrupted here it's two so it's corrupted as simple as that and it's giving you three marks for that so you cannot mess this question okay you cannot mess this question then it says another method of error detection is the arq okay and it says explain how arq is used in the error detection Okay, so let's see. So the first thing you need to identify is that it uses acknowledgements. Okay, acknowledgements. Okay, An acknowledgement is simply just a message to tell the computer or the user what's happening. Okay, and then the timeout is simply a clock that measures how much time is taken for the message to be sent. And if it's not sent in that required time, an acknowledgement is sent. Okay, so then you say, okay, if error detected, Okay, if error is det detected, then request sent to resend the data, to resend data using an acknowledgement. Okay, using an acknowledgement. Okay, then you can say, then if no acknowledgement is sent, the data is received. If no acknowledgement, if no acknowledgement received then data has been uh, has been let's say um has been received received correctly and then we we talk about the timing signals so it's only four marks so the last one you can say that um data is a recent until data is correctly sent and is monitored using timing signals okay as simple as that let's move on to the next question the next question talks about signals are sent to and from the components of a processor using buses okay we have three buses that you need to know let's see how many they're asking us here they're only asking us for two buses and they're also asking the purpose okay let's start with address bus so an address bus an address bus the purpose okay would well, number one for an address you know it comes from its name it transports an address it comes from the name okay Transport an address, and you can also say that data travels one way, and we call this unidirectional. Uni, um, sorry, uh, uni direction. Okay. The next one, bus two, you can say I'll do all three buses. You can say data bus. Okay, data bus. Data bus. You can say from its name transports what data. Okay, transports. Data. That's the best way to remember. It comes from the name and it's transporting. And you can say this one is bi-directional. Uh, sorry. We. 
bidirectional bidirectional okay and that will give you your, your three marks right and then i'll just add bus three okay and this would be the control bus okay and this one the purpose is not to transport but instead is okay it does transport actually it transports signal though but it doesn't come from the name i believe but it does transport transports signals and it is by can be can be uni directional or by directional okay let's move on to the next question the next question is e matching the statement encryption encryption is simply changes to ciphertext so that's the keyword you just look for ciphertext and you'll get the answer uh, do we see ciphertext okay if you don't find ciphertext anywhere then you look for stuff like um in you know scrambles data because that's also okay there you go scrambles data so here i'm just going to write encryption uh, because my entire screen is not fitting uh with secure socket layer ssl is simply you have to look at connection so where's connection here secure connection so here is ssl uh farming farming the difference between farming and phishing is that farming is simply a malicious code that is installed into the user's hard drive and is then um, you know done or then redacts redirects the user to a website but then phishing okay on the other hand is a legitimate looking email that redirects the user to a fake focus website so farming we have to look for a malicious code and you can see right here so here it is farming okay and phishing is a legitimate looking email so we have a look at that here is phishing so you can see the way i'm analyzing each question is quite simple a firewall is simply uses criterias okay and um yeah and you can see here it's firewall. it's quite direct actually sometimes you ask questions on explaining how the firewall works that's quite easy i've done i think a post paper on that you can try find that and i've also done theory videos on that i've done actually the entire course um i'll be linking that also down in the description if you want the last one is proxy servers so that should be an intermediary between a web server and the internet so proxy server okay so we move on to completing the paragraph by choosing six correct terms from the list let's begin a computer has two different types of memory we have the uh, secondary memory and the primary memory okay so we can say first one is secondary um a computer has two types of memory secondary memory is not directly accessed because so primary is secondary is not that's why i chose um secondary okay then it says but it allows a user to store data that can be easily accessed by applications two examples of this is hdd HDD and SSD. I don't even need to look at the, uh, you know, the, the words for this. You know, it's quite direct. Okay. The second type of memory is the primary memory. Okay. And this memory is accessed by the CPU. It allows uh, the process to access data instructions, and this is stored in the RAM or the ROM. Okay. So very easy. Very easy. Six marks. Very easy. Six marks. Now, a super a supermarket has and a system that allows customers to check out their own shopping identify and describe the purpose of two input devices the first one that you cannot miss is the barcode scanner okay because you also use you've seen it in supermarkets so barcode scanner you know to scan your item they use a barcode scanner you know the one that has an infrared uh, ray that's coming through the input device <coughs> sorry that's called a barcode scanner and this will allow allows customer to scan their shopping okay so as simple as that then you can also say like a keyboard for example okay a keyboard any input device will work keyboard and you can say a keyboard can be used to uh, input the quantity for example quantity of their products and whatever you see in the supermarket you just have to add those and the output device can be for example a printer